Hey everyone, today we're going to continue our discussion on graphing. We have developed some graphing skills as a way to represent data so we can visually see patterns and relationships. We've looked at direct relationships where the independent variable increases and so does the dependent variable, creating an upward sloping line. Indirect relationships show the independent variable increasing while the dependent variable decreases, showing a downward sloping line. We're going to look at a third relationship today, and we're going to do that through the lens of a case study on the tides and tidal range in a place called the Bay of Fundy, which is in Nova Scotia, Canada. The Bay of Fundy has some of the highest high tides on planet Earth, and some of the lowest low tides on planet Earth because its coastline is shaped like a funnel. And so we're going to look at the pattern and see if we can't learn from this pattern and determine whether it's a predictable pattern that cycles what we call a cyclic relationship. So let's start by graphing the data table. Here's our data table. Notice we have independent variables of time, and the dependent variable of tide height. Looking at the graph, well, here's a pretty cool image of it, by, by the way. You can see you can hike in an area and then later in the day actually go kayaking in it. Pretty amazing. So looking at the x-axis, our independent variable is separated by two days, August 21st, going from midnight to noon, which represents a.m., noon to midnight, which represents p.m., and then August 22nd, midnight to noon, a.m., noon to midnight, p.m. The y-axis is dependent on time. It's tide height in meters, which is measured above or below sea level. So let's graph. Notice at the top it says plot with an x the height of the water for each time listed on the tide table. Let's do the first two together. The first date is August 21st at 1.28 a.m. The tide height is 14 meters. So let's find 1.28 a.m. on the graph. We're on the 21st. Here's midnight. Here's 2 a.m. This must be 1 a.m. 1.30 would be halfway between. Going up to the tide height of 14 meters, we're going to follow this up, placing an X right at 128. One twenty-eight a.m., 14 meters. Let's go to the second data point, the first low tide. 8.03 a.m., so here's 8 a.m., and the tide height is negative 0.1. Careful here, this is negative 1, negative 0.1 would be closer to 0. You can connect those points eventually, and that's what you'll do. We'll do one more together. August 21st, it says 1.54 p.m. So now it's noon, here's 2, this is 1, 1.54 is closer to 2. The height, the tide height is 13.7. Going all the way up to 13.7, which should be just below 14. Pause the video here. Complete the graph. You're going to get all data points. There are eight of them. When you're done graphing all eight points, you're going to connect them with a smooth curving line and then press play again. All right, how'd it go? Take a look at your graph. You will see spikes and you will see dips in the data. It looks like an ocean wave, but we have a crest and a trough. 
and it seems to be a repeating pattern that could be predictable. The high tides are indicated up here, and the low tides are indicated down here. What is the time difference between one high tide and the other? Use your data table to figure out the difference in time. For example, here's a high tide, here's a high tide. 14.0 to 13.7, these are two high tides. How much time has gone by between them? Pause the video and try to figure it out. All right, the big clue here is, is that we're going from a.m. to p.m. If we're going from 1, if we are going from 1.28 a.m. to 1.54 p.m., how much time goes by? Well, from 1 a.m. to 1 p.m., we have a half a day. There's 24 hours in a day. That should be 12 hours. However, we have some minutes that we have to figure out. What is the difference? We have 54 minutes on the 21st for the second high tide, and we have 28 minutes for the first high tide. The time difference between is going to be 6, 4, 2. The total time difference between high tides is 12 hours and 26 minutes. So clearly this graph does not represent a direct relationship, and it certainly doesn't represent an indirect relationship. It's a repeating pattern that's predictable that we call a cyclic or cyclic relationship. Changes that are predictable and repetitive, like ocean waves, or I should say, ocean tides. Tides are predictable because the moon revolves around the Earth. The moon tugs on the earth and pulls at its oceans, creating high and low tides. The earth rotates into these high and low tides every day. Every 24 hours, we have two highs and two lows a day. Therefore, tides are a cyclic relationship. Moon phases. We go through a series of moon phases from the new moon to the quarter moons to the full moons every month because of the revolution of the moon. We have seasons on planet Earth as the Earth revolves around the sun as we go from summer, fall, winter, and spring. There are lots of examples of cyclic relationships in Earth science. There's also some examples of non-cyclic. These non-cyclic relationships are not predictable and they are not repetitive. Can you think of any? Earthquakes, for example really difficult to predict them. They seem to happen with no rhyme or reason, although they are happening in very specific locations and causing a lot of devastation. Volcanoes do not erupt with regularity, and they're difficult to predict. The weather changes constantly. It's highly variable. It is not necessarily predictable in terms of having the same thing every day. That is cyclic relationships. Have a great day, guys.